G'day folks, Scott here. Today I am reviewing The Shape of Water. This is a new movie from Guillermo del Toro, who is one of my favourite directors. He's a unique director in the fact that he has kind of two bodies of work. He has his more independent, less studio driven, sometimes Spanish, sometimes American movies, and he has his huge blockbuster movies. And he's floated in between them beautifully throughout his career and made this really impressive body of work. So on this hand, you've got stuff like Kronos and The Devil's Backbone and Pan's Labyrinth, all of which are these like beautifully made movies, wonderfully told stories. And on this hand, you've got Blade 2 and Hellboy 1, Hellboy 2, Pacific Rim, Crimson Peak, this more studio system Hollywood big budget kind of stuff. Now, Crimson Peak and, um, and uh, Pacific Rim aren't my favorite of his works. I would never go so far as to call them bad movies, but in his body of work, they're definitely my least favorite. But, you know, I, I love some of his studio stuff. I adore, as I'm sure a lot of you do, his, his older and his more independent films. And if you haven't seen the ones I mentioned, make sure you do, they're fantastic. So this movie sits somewhere between them. It has elements of that big blockbuster Hollywood movie, but it also has elements of his older stuff. Um, by that I mean this movie has been pushed as, you know, which well earned. You know, getting best movie nominations, he got best director at the Golden Globes. The ad I saw on TV last night, which as always gave away a lot, you know, I haven't watched any trailers going into this. That ad had all the, you know, nominated for this, best movie of the year, blah, 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 even though the year just began. Which is great, because I want people to go see this movie. But I think a lot of mainstream audiences who go see this won't be quite prepared for the level of violence that he likes to bring into these stories, where it completely blindsides you. There's some sexual content in there, you know, language and things like that. And I love the fact that he has such a strong body of work that even if he had a producer or someone at marketing at 20th Century Fox Searchlight going, hey, look, dude, if you cut out the gore and the sex and the swearing, we could drop the rating, we could get more people to see it, it'd be a more successful film. And he stuck to his gun, he stuck to his vision, and he stuck to, you know, his, his way that he makes movies, which I applaud. So... You know, this movie has uh, Sally Hawkins in it as the main character, a mute girl who works in a research laboratory. Doug Jones plays the fish man, and ironically, he played the fish, or not ironically, like he played the fish man in Hellboy 1 and 2, Ape Sapien as well. So Del Toro clearly likes him for that kind of role. And then Michael Shannon plays the, you know, the, the main protagonist, security guy from that laboratory. And without ruining anything, this is totally spoiler free. She works in the laboratory. This fish guy gets brought there, you know, and, and imprisoned there. And they develop a relationship and the movie goes on from there. Now, although like, you know, some of his earlier works, which are supernatural thrillers, mild horrors, fantasy movies, and then his big blockbuster stuff, this is primarily a love story. It really is. Of course, there's a monster in it and there's violence and swearing and some sex and stuff, but it's a love story through and through. Beautifully told, wonderfully written. I love that it was set in the 60s. All the sets from the laboratories to their apartments to the street settings and buses to even a character who goes to a Chrysler showroom to buy a brand new car. These things are so meticulously, beautifully built, wonderfully lit, so well shot. Like, Garoma knows how to make a movie. And it shows through and through in this. Like, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Out of the entirety of the movie, there was maybe one minute where it was a scene where I, I won't ruin, but I was a bit like, nah, I probably could have done without that. And the story didn't really need it. I found that it drew me out of this thing a little bit and was a bit odd. Uh, but that's a very small complaint about a very cool movie. Just go in, you're seeing a love story. If that doesn't appeal to you, don't go see it. But if you want to see a unique twist on a love story that's well made by a guy who knows how to tell and shoot a story, then this is the movie for you. It's getting lots of promotion on TV. He's gotten lots of nominations and he even won Best Director at the Golden Globes. So go support it. It's better than most things you see at the movies right now. And yeah, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I'll be back to review something else really soon. Thanks, guys.